realize that perhaps uh, the next uh, film subject might be on the notion of search. And Mr. Siegel uh, readily agreed to that. And the, the, the particular uh, basilica was run at that time by the Frere of de Jerusalem. And one brother was taking us around and explained that the cathedral had been designed so that on the summer solstice, the light uh, came in through the top of the, the nave and spilled directly into the center of the nave in the aisle between uh, the pews or the chairs in this case, and that this was a, an important moment in the life of this uh, cathedral each year. So we vowed uh, to make an attempt to come back that following June, and we did. And we made a film. Now you should understand that Mr. Siegel moved to New York at a relatively young age, uh, went to NYU, became a track and football star, became a businessman, uh, launched his own uh, magazine, uh, which at its time was uh, about as far thinking as any publication you have ever seen called Gentry, which in the early 1950s was, I, I couldn't even describe what it is, a, a combination of Parabola and Esquire, and, and, and that it does only uh, poor justice uh, to what it was uh, decades uh, ahead of its time and its interest in esoteric philosophy, an esoteric philosophy that was brought on by an essential emptiness on his part, a desire. Uh, for search, which he nurtured through an initial uh, collaboration and intersection with the Gurdjieff work, uh, working directly with uh, Gurdjieff and his uh, disciple P.D. Ospensky for many, many years, uh, but also became extraordinarily ecumenical. And, and after the Second World War, he spent a great deal of time in Japan, got to know D.T. Suzuki, and became really a student of Zen Buddhism and helped to bring back to at least the Gurdjieff work and to these shores, uh, not only a reliance on sitting, meditation, uh, but also in an unusual uh, guided, spoken meditation, uh, which he brought back and which many of us ha had the privilege to um, witness. And while we were making this film and in the months leading up to the second film, I asked him if I might once be able to film one of these meditations, and he would say, no. And uh, we proceeded over the course of several days to film at Vézelay at the time of the summer solstice to continue to do an interview with him as this film had. And then on the last morning he relented and at dawn in the crypt where the bones of Mary Magdalene are supposed to reside, uh, he permitted me to film a guided meditation which serves as the sort of parentheses, the context in which this smaller uh, film about Vézelay and this question of search, uh, I felt could be undertaken. And uh, we felt very fortunate to spend this time uh, to have this with him and, and put together a film uh, called Vézelay, which I'd like to share with you now. And I hope we'll, combined with the first film, untitled, though we call it for simplicity, uh, William Siegel, and maybe sending you ahead in your own thoughts uh, when I describe to you a little bit about the context of the third film. Uh, the conversation that we'll have afterwards. So could we run the second and final film? It is 30 minutes.